Hello everyone and welcome to another Gross University educational webinar. My name is Dominic Caminata, owner, founder, and industry leading sales trainer. I'm really excited about today's webinar for several reasons. One, this is our first webinar of 2023, so it's always great to get a new year off to uh, the right start. And I believe that the content we're going to be sharing on this webinar is truly going to be transformational and have a major impact on your ability to grow and scale the sales arm of your organization. And I'm also excited about today's webinar because the guest I'm going to be featuring today, I feel is one of the legends of this industry. He's known by literally thousands and thousands of people, and he's influenced the growth and success and development of more companies that I could count. And I've personally known this gentleman for many years. His name is Tim Mush, and right now he's the business development specialist for Paradigm. And Paradigm happens to be one of our amazing sponsors at Grass University. And they're doing some incredible things in the world of digital platforms. And we're going to obviously dive into some of that content on this webinar today. As always with the Grass University webinar, I encourage everybody to grab their pens and paper. Make sure you take plenty of notes. And this is a pre-recorded webinar. So we're going to be able to ask questions and answer those questions throughout the duration of the webinar. So any questions that you have, make sure you put those in the chat box. We're going to answer those throughout the pre-recording. And then after this pre-recording is over, make sure you stay tuned because we're going to have a really strong call to action, a really great promotion and a, an offer exclusive to this webinar only. And we're also going to open it up to live Q&A if there's any other specific questions that you have. So without further ado, uh, I just want to say thank you, Tim, for joining us today on the webinar. How are you today? <laughs> I'm doing fine. How are you doing, Dominic? Fantastic. Um, I don't have to ask you how the weather is where you're at because we're both Wisconsinites. So we can uh, both uh, share a lot of horror stories about the winters here. But we still stay in Wisconsin because the people here are great and we love the seasons, right? <laughs> we sure do. <laughs> So um, you and I were chit-chatting not too long ago, just kind of uh, reflecting back on some of your history in the industry and the different roles that you've had as you've grown throughout this entire journey that you've been on. And I think the story of how you became a part of Paradigm and this new Vendo program is, is truly remarkable. And it's obviously a testament to what they're doing there. But if you don't mind, can you share just briefly a little bit about your background prior to becoming a part of Paradigm and what, what it was specifically about what Paradigm Vendo is offering to the industry that sparked your interest. Yeah, well, thanks for the opportunity. Um, yeah, as many people likely might know on the webinar that I spent a number of years, about 30. Dominic, are you 30 yet? Uh, yeah, I'm 37, so. All right, so I spent about 30 years at Market Sharp. Uh, that journey began with me in the window replacement business on the retail side. Uh, long story short, just picked up uh, back then an old Macintosh computer, figured out how to program it, and created what we now know as a CRM way back then. And that evolved over the years and turned into a product that, that many people probably on this, on this webinar use. It's a product called MarketSharp. And I uh, spent a number of years there, had a great career there, and uh, still going strong with that product out in the field. Um, but it came time where I thought, you know, 30 years might be enough. So I had some friends that I met oh, probably about 10, 12 years ago in your back there, Dominic, in, in Middleton, which is right around Madison, Wisconsin, uh, with a company called Paradigm, and uh, really was interested in what they were doing. And I'll get to more of that as we get into maybe some of the, uh, some of the content here in a few, minute, in a few minutes. But just was interested in what they were doing. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to reach out to them um, in the interim. One of my coworkers at Market Sharp, Jason Oftedal, uh, moved to Paradigm. So we kind of reunited down there and we're pretty excited about the opportunity we have down there. And, and I'll share a little bit more about, about how that happened and why that happened. I want to get into the, the content on it. Yeah, absolutely. No, I appreciate that introduction. And Again, um, I didn't realize how influential Paradigm's been just in the building and trades and contracting world in general for decades. So uh, it's definitely going to be good to dive more into that story as time goes on. So thankfully, um, you know, every time I do a webinar with Tim Mush, this guy always puts together masterful presentations. And it just so happens to be kind of one of the topics of today is, you know, what are those things that you can be doing to deliver a more masterful presentation 
And of course, we're not just referring to the product itself. It's really everything that that salesperson in your company is doing throughout the entire flow of that sale, really from phone call to install, everything in between. What exactly are you doing to set yourself apart? And what is the consumer really looking for? Some of the things we're gonna talk about. But I really love the title that you have here. You have the five elements today's home improvement buyers demand in your presentation. So what I'll do, Tim, uh, if you just wanna kinda take it from there, uh, we got a lot of great talking points and I love this whole old school versus new school. But one question I did wanna ask, you know, obviously we're getting into a world where more things are going digital, more things are going paperless, but I always say the home improvement industry by nature is always about 10 to 15 years behind the rest of the world. <laughs> we're kinda late to adopt certain things. And I know for a fact that even with all the technology being influxed into this industry, that there's still a majority of the companies that are out there that are still using a printed price sheet, they're using a three ring binder to do their presentation, paper contracts, <laughs> showing photos on their cell phone of different jobs. So now what would you say is like one of the number one reasons a contractor would ever hesitate to go digital? What do you think is the big holdup there? Well, I think, I think maybe one of the holdups is just they're somewhat of a fear that maybe their sales staff won't adapt to this new way of doing business. And uh, I can see some of that out there. Many people have salespeople that have been around for years and years and years who are very successful and so forth. And all of a sudden, you're going to put them in the home on an iPad when they're used to doing things with that three ring binder and all that kind of stuff. So that seems to be one of the things that that give people pause before they move in this direction. But, you know, my opinion, and I think likely you might feel the same way, Dominic, is if these changes aren't made, these companies are going to get run over uh, by some of these other companies that are very, uh, very, very up to speed with technology and doing things that consumers are really looking for. Yeah, I couldn't agree with you more. And, you know, I can appreciate what exactly you're talking about, how people just get used to a certain way of doing things and they get comfortable with it. And maybe in their mind, they have justifiable levels of success doing it that way. Because believe it or not, Tim, obviously I'm not that old, but <laughs> when I first got into the industry, I was going into a house with a three ring binder and doing my presentation on that. I used to love setting that thing on the table. They would see it was like that thick. And the first question they'd always ask is, you're not going through that whole book, are you? I said, no, I mean, this has a lot of other information that's just for me only. We're just gonna be hitting some of the highlights here. And then of course, sure enough, we'd be going through the whole dang thing. Um, but then we made the transition to doing our presentation on a tablet or an iPad. And I didn't like it at first, honestly, just because I had been doing the three ring binder for three years and I was used to it. I mean, me and that book were pretty much attached to the hip. And now I have to learn this whole new platform is a little daunting. But what I realized was, my level of professionalism and my ability to differentiate and come across as an expert became much, much easier. And then once I got comfortable using this device, I realized how much more efficient it made my life and a lot of the objections I commonly got, I didn't get anymore. And then I had all these different ways to make my presentation more interactive and obviously uh, more masterful than ever before. So there's just a lot of things that uh, over time that I learned to appreciate, but I, I was one of those people that had the, the resistance and the little pushback about going this route. So I can understand why contractors feel that way. So, but yeah, let's go ahead and take a dive. Um, I understand you got a, a nice little agenda for us on this presentation. I'll let you kind of roll with that. I do, all right, let's get rolling. Uh, first off, what we're gonna do is a little bit of intro information to kind of set the stage for what we'll chat about here. And then we're going to get into really what our customers want. And uh, we're going to start with the very basics of that and kind of build that up to a little more detail. And it's going to end up evolving to the point where what they really want is they want a type of pre presentation that, that Dominic teaches and delivers. And that's that masterful presentation that touches all the bases that are necessary to have optimum closing rates and things such as that. We're gonna get into those five elements that we talked about. We're gonna talk about old school versus new school when it comes, comes time to looking at presentations. Then we're gonna dive in and give a little overview of Vendo. Uh, not gonna spend a ton of time there, but we want you to know really what this product can do along these lines. And then we'll kind of wind up with some suggestions and give you an opportunity to learn a little bit more if you'd like. 
So let's start here. What is it our customers want? And when you think about it, this is what they want. They want to be satisfied, you know, regardless of what they're buying. And you as a consumer feel the same way. You spend some money for something, you you really want to be satisfied with it. Um, and I think nowadays, I pe think people want to be more than satisfied with purchases that they make. So with that as the beginning point, let's dive in a little bit further. You know, in simple words, customer satisfaction is a measurement that determines how well a company's products or services meet this customer's expectations. I think that's a great definition of customer satisfaction. But yeah. you know what? Nowadays, I think it's changed a little bit. Nowadays, I think customer satisfaction is a measurement that determines how well a company's process products or services. In other words, the whole customer experience meets their expectations. It's more than just about the product you sell. It really is. It's about the full experience that they get with you. A lot of their expectations are established from the salesperson too and what they're promising, right? So, you know, one little word of advice is do not promise what your company does not have the capacity to deliver on. <laughs> and salespeople are renowned for that over promising and making all these amazing claims as to what's going to happen. So we have to have realistic expectations and then certainly make sure you're fulfilling them and ideally going even a step above exceeding their expectations, right? Under promise over deliver uh, is the strategy. And I actually used to talk about this openly with my customers in their house. I used to say, you know, John and Mary, we live in a pretty interesting industry that we work in because we're working on people's number one investments in their life every single day. <laughs> so more than most industries, there's increased pressure on us to deliver on our promises because if we don't, that means we, we could be causing a catastrophic issue or causing a lot of harm to the number one investment in your life. So that's why it's increasingly important more than ever before to make sure that you trust the right contractor and that you're in good hands. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I, I love the next uh, slides here because it seems like the home improvement industry is starting to learn from their mistakes, but still making the same mistakes, expecting a different result. <laughs> well, you're right. So the question we want to ask is if customer satisfaction is really what we're after as an industry, how are we doing? <laughs> and uh, here's some statistical information. In fact, from the 2021 Customer Complaint Survey Report from the Consumer Federation of America. Now, if you look on the right there, we're not at the top of the list. How exciting is that? Wow. <laughs> but we're third from the top of the list in terms of the number of consumer complaints that come our way. Of course, we got auto sales and repair, number one. We got landlords and tenants, number two. Uh, and then we got the home improvement business, the business we're in. So some of you are probably thinking, well, Tim, well, why are you mentioning that? It's kind of negative. I thought this, thought this webinar was going to be uplifting and positive. You know, this might be the most uplifting and positive slide in this whole presentation, because what this points out is the opportunity you have with your company to stand head and shoulders above your competition. That's reflected here and uh, present your company in a way where people just think the world of you and are ready to tell the world about their experience with you. So the opportunity is great because of really where we sit. So this is interesting, I found. J.D. Power, we've all heard of them, 2022 customer satisfaction study based on the responses of more than 3,000 customers who made home improvement purchases in the previous 12 months. A lot to be learned here in this little short paragraph. Home improvement shopping is often a large investment, can be difficult for customers to know which brands to consider and where to make the purchase. And here's the thing, manufacturers and retailers, and I got it underlined and in bold, that personalized the experience will see higher overall satisfaction scores. And I'm going to go down to the bottom here and just kind of sum up with what they said at the end here. Customers but we will, will be willing to invest more when they have this type of experience. So what we need to do, Dominic, is we need to have our presentation and everything we do with our prospects and with our customers be personalized because that's what they're expecting nowadays. And we got to deliver it in that manner. Yeah, everyone wants to feel special, wants to feel important. And that's kind of a dying art these days. And this is the conversation I'm having with salespeople over the country because, you know, a lot of people are falling into this stinking thinking mentality. And, 
giving into a lot of the negativity all around them in the world. But what, the way I explain it is, there's never been a better opportunity as long as I've been in the industry and as long as I can recall for a properly trained sales professional that goes in with the right tools, is truly does their due diligence, personalizes the experience, has a morsel of work ethic and makes that person feel special. I said, if you make it your goal, simply just to make that person feel special and give them a masterful presentation, the, out or the probability of you coming out the outcome you desire is higher than ever before in history. Because then I asked the audience, I'm like, raise your hand if you think that the work ethic of the average person today is very high. If, if people are willing to work hard these days, even that alone is hard to find. Now, raise your hand if you think that the sales training that every salesperson receives in this industry is literally the, the most state-of-the-art, top-notch sales training ever given. <laughs> That's simply not the case, right? So the only competition is you. And what are those things that you can do to enhance your game, invest in the right tools, and differentiate yourself from every Joe Blow Chuck in a truck? Now, as we're gonna talk about throughout this webinar, my thing is the, the concept of Chuck in a truck and Larry with the ladder is kind of becoming a dying art. And I feel there's gonna come a point, and this is kind of to your point in the beginning, where that person's gonna become extinct if they don't evolve especially with this influx of private equity where they're snatching up all these companies all over the country, they're spending billions and billions of dollars, and the two things they're investing the most in is technology and training. And going digital and investing in these tools are some of the primary things that they're doing first and foremost. So again, like you said in the beginning, Tim, is if we're not embracing this stuff and truly getting ahead of the game, there could be a chance you're gonna get steamrolled. Absolutely. So let's move on. We talked about the first thing people want is just to be satisfied. And when you think about it, this is something I know we've all heard, but I think it's something very important to remind ourselves of all the time. When we're thinking about why people buy things from us, it really is these three letters, K, L, and T. And I think we know what these are, don't we? Yeah. People buy things from people they know, like, and trust. So when you're thinking about putting together your presentation and making that masterful presentation, these are the things you got to accomplish. People got to know you. They got to like you. And then what follows along is they really got to trust you. If you put those three things together in your presentation, the chances of them doing business with you are very high. Because when you think about it, when you think about prospects that don't end up accepting a proposal for whatever reason, something's lacking somewhere in here. It really is. So that's your goal. So think through your presentation, make sure it's touching all these bases, and we'll, we'll go and chat about this uh, in some of the slides that are coming up. But this is really our goal. So no like, and trust is really what we're after. Think about it. On the no aspect, they got to know you. They got to know your company. That involves in the lead generation part of it. That involves in your story, your company story, and so forth. They got to like you. They got to like you personally. That helps. Uh, and your company. And they got to like your product and your service. And guess what? They better like your price, too. So you better figure out a way to present your price in a manner where it's likable. And then finally, trust all of the above. And then any social proof you can add to the mix is going to do nothing but help your cause as you go forward. So let's talk about and define these five elements today's home improvement demanders are really demanding in your presentation. I think number one is one that many of us overlook. One thing they're demanding is they really want to know what they can expect. And we'll get into that in just a couple minutes in a little more detail, but that's something I think that really, really helps your presentation if your prospect knows what's about to come at them. So they want to know what they can expect. Once you get that, then they want, to, they want to know you have a full understanding of what they need and or want. And this involves the inspection or needs assessment step or whatever you call that in your sales methodology. But that's an important thing. That's that personalized aspect that that survey pointed out from J.D. Powers. And then in your product and service presentation, your demo, and the personalized recommendations you make, they want to make sure that they are personalized. These things really make sense for us and what our needs are. It's just not a cookie cutter approach. And then how about this? 
They really want clear pricing and payment options in a manner where they fully understand them and uh, in a manner where it makes sense to them and uh, it's not really sticker shocking them. And then finally, social proof is something everybody wants when they're thinking about doing business with a company that they're gonna spend maybe tens of thousands of dollars with. It really helps to learn about what other people thought about the experience they had with your company. So what we're gonna try to do for the next few minutes is we're gonna try to touch on these five things as we go through this in a little more detail. And then we'll give you that little glimpse of, of uh, Vendo and how it can help you accomplish this in your quest to be the best you can be. So let's start with number one. They really want to know what they can expect. And I got this from, from a friend of mine. His name is Kyle Hunt. Many of you maybe know Kyle. He has a podcast called Remodders on the Rise. And this just makes so much sense to me. You know, he just has this thing where he teaches people this. These five words are magic words when you begin your relationship with somebody, maybe at the beginning part of your presentation. He goes on and says, now this is how we work. And then what he does is he goes on and explains the process and what's about to unfold. Because let's face it, a lot of our prospects are somewhat anxious about this. They really are. Uh, they've not done this before. They've not considered spending this amount of money. They've maybe heard stories of home improvement companies that have weren't the best. You know, hence we got that third from the top of the list in terms of consumer complaints. So this is something that can really reduce some of that anxiety very early in the presentation if you begin this way. So start with these five words. This is how we work. And then kind of unfold an outline of what you're about to do with them. You know, some of the best advice I ever got as it relates to any type of presentation is this. You, know, you want to tell them what you're going to tell them. And then you tell them. And then you tell them what you told them at the end. And if we do those three things, I think the presentation is very easy to understand and it's going to do a great job for you. So that's where we think we should begin with those five magic words. Then sure. on to step two of the five elements or number two, the inspection of some sort. This is the process of identifying and determining how to fill the gaps between your prospect's current state and their desired state. You know, Dominic, I know you've got all sorts of things that can help people along these lines, but this is something where you're just uncovering, you know, what you need to uncover so you can fill it back up with your solution. I remember one sales trainer that I wish I had these tapes of, lost them. His name was H.C. Peebles years ago. And he called this empty in their bucket. So you're getting to the point where you're really kind of digging in, finding out what's going on in that home, finding out what they're looking for, what's going to be useful to them. And then you can offer those personalized solutions to them. So a big, important part of the presentation is right. Yeah, there. I just want to touch on that because still today, you know, I'm working with a lot of clients that do not have a survey, intelligence gathering, discovery phase of their sales process. And I just want to touch on that briefly because if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. If the survey is not properly executed or executed at all, the salesperson is doing that client a disservice because they physically lack the, the capacity now to give them a personalized experience. So it's really in that needs assessment, intelligence gathering phase where I start building my foundation of trust, carving out the roadmap to the sale, and getting all the information I need in order to ta tailor that presentation specific to that customer's needs, wants, and desires. One thing I used to do, Tim, because I'd constantly get salespeople that say, Dominic, I ran the process correctly. I did everything you told me. <laughs> um, I just hit a dead end in the close. I don't know what happened. And I said, let me see your survey. <laughs> and I would require that all my salespeople turn in their, sa their surveys whether or not they had a sale or not. And lo and behold, often when they hit a roadblock in the close, the survey was blank. I'm like, do you see any problem here? You had no target. You didn't have any trust, no rapport, nothing established. You just kind of went right into trying to solve a problem that you didn't even know what the problem was, right? So I think that's so important between the needs assessment and that whole inspection, that measuring phase, that has to be a major component of your in-home master presentation and something that you have to spend some time on. And I think a lot of people are doing themselves and the client a disservice by not truly mastering that phase. 
So I just will say that, and we'll talk about it again uh, once we get into Vendo, but if that's an area you're lacking, please get your reps the training and the tools to enhance that section of their masterful presentation. Well, you're right. That step is probably one of the most mm, ignored steps there are in the sales process. Yeah. And as you mentioned, it just makes no sense. You know, people go into a home and say, hey, I'm this guy and this is my company. We've been in business for so many years. And then they go right into their product demo. And it's like, yeah. man. Yeah, and you described it as empty in the bucket. You know, the thing I always explain to my salespeople is your prospect is just like an iceberg. They're only going to show you 20% of what you need in order to get at the 80%, which is truly what you need to influence a buying decision. You need to go through a really detailed discovery, ask the right open-ended questions and get them to open up and start the conversation. You know, make this entire thing a conversation, not interrogation. But through asking the right open-ended questions and demonstrating true empathy, what you're doing is you're getting them to feel special and feel, feel important. And the more you can keep the spotlight on them, that's also going to help you establish that foundation of trust that you need. So a lot of things to dig into there. So. All right. So once you've done that discovery, you've done a needs assessment, all that, and you've got some stuff to work with, now it's time to do your product and service recommendation. And here we're talking about your product demos. And you got to make sure that you just don't look at this as a physical demo. In other words, it's just not a window sample or whatever products you happen to be selling. Just having samples there and all that stuff, you got to go much beyond that nowadays. Yep. Visuals are critical in this stage of the presentation. Things you can do along those lines are so important because when you think about it, you know, if you're installing a window, would you probably agree with me that maybe your installation process is every bit as important as that physical piece of product that you're putting in the wall? <laughs> and the answer is yes. So there might be some ways or some things you need to do along those lines to really, really tell your story in a manner where you're continuing to build value. So I just want to chime in there. Um, one of the best investments that I made and our company made when I was a sales leader is we got the whole company together. We hired a film crew and we made a really powerful about us video that was basically all the key leaders in our company explaining basically the human element of our business, being family oriented, oriented, locally owned and operated. And it had some really like, you know, calming music in the background but allow that customer to kind of role play in their mind or hypothetically work with all the key leaders of our team in advance, because all human beings make decisions hypothetically before they ever make them in reality. And it gave them that peace of mind that not just the representative that's in their, in, at their kitchen table is a professional and a class act and trustworthy, but also this seems to be the culture of their business, right? And then we also, and this was all within a few days we knocked all this out, but then we had a a couple installation videos that we made for all of our products and services, for windows, for sliding glass doors, for the one day bath. And it was narrated by one of our production managers. Because again, one of the fears they have is, okay, is, is the company gonna deliver on all the things that the salesperson's claiming they will? And by them seeing that movie, seeing the whole process unfold, the installation side, as you just mentioned, it takes that fear and it reduces it to almost nothing and it allows them to fuel that positive movie in their mind of all the wonderful things that are gonna happen once they take this leap of faith with your business, right? And those are some of the things you talk about visuals are important. You can put things in their hands and you can say anything you want, but ultimately you're trying to fuel that positive movie in their mind, right? You're trying, because all people think in pictures, not words. So that's really why imagery and these visuals are so important. And again, it's the emotional decision, right? <laughs> So keying to their emotions, when people are watching a video or watching an illustration or a movie or whatever, it's almost like getting lost in story time and it actually holds their attention a lot better and it keys to the emotional center of their mind. So basically from top to bottom, forwards and backwards, having strong visuals and video content and imagery in your presentation is gonna dramatically enhance the, the power and effectiveness of your masterful presentation. So it sure will. All right. So now we told, told them what we're going to tell them. And then we did the inspection step and discovery step and so forth. And then we provided our solutions based on what we learned. Now it's time to present price. So a couple things to think about here. 
you know, ask yourself this question. Do you think how your price is presented might influence your closing ratios? I think the obvious answer to that is, is yes, but let's think about that a little bit. Are you presenting price in a believable way? You know, some people don't do very well with that. So we want to make sure that credibility is still there in however you're presenting price. Are you doing any price conditioning before you deliver the price? And of course, there you can use a cost versus value study. Don't have time to really get into that now, but that's really one of the best sales tools you could use in the home. And how about this? Are your salespeople offering a financing option on each and every presentation? I'm still stunned at how many companies are not. And then finally, are you protecting your profit margins by having control and limiting things such as discounting that your salespeople can do in the home? These are all important things rather than just writing a price on a piece of paper and showing it to them yeah. and thinking that's all there is to delivering price. There's a lot of things involved here. This is really crunch time in the presentation when you think about it. So this is so important. And then finally, element number five is that social proof aspect. You know, people really want to hear from people other than you, you meaning the salesperson. You know, maybe some videos or testimonials, maybe text testimonials. How about some online reviews, maps of jobs in the area, accreditations that you have with various organizations? That's going to do nothing but help your cause from a third party aspect. And that's really, really important. I just wanted to talk about this quickly because um, a lot of people overthink things. A lot of contractors think that they have to wait for the, the product to get installed and for the whole company to exceed that customer's expectations to start getting reviews. Well, one thing that we started doing in my sales team um, when I was the manager there is I actually created this new button-up strategy because we, we would always have the client sell the job back at the end. <laughs> We'd always have them sell the job back and they would write down the reasons why they decided to move forward, which is a really powerful way to button up the sale. Well, what we started doing is the salespeople would ask the customer kindly, because they're always trying to prove it what they do, if they wouldn't mind doing a 30 second or one minute testimonial video explaining right when the sale is made, what it was exactly that made them feel comfortable moving forward today on the project. And they basically give these testimonial videos sharing the numerous reasons why they felt comfortable taking the leap with this contractor and why they trusted them to their home and what we did is we took all these testimonial videos and we compiled them into like a, a little montage. <laughs> and that's something that the customers were watching before, we, like as we were working up the price. So they'd see like four or five or six clients explaining all the reasons why they felt comfortable moving forward. And it's priming that customer that this is what everybody does, right? <laughs> this is the natural conclusion. This is the way everybody buys from us. And then taking it one step further, and this is why this popped in my head is, that salesperson also right then and there should be able to get that customer to write a review on Google or whatever platform you desire as to why they felt comfortable moving forward and what their experience was with their design consultant. And you think of that, if you're an organization watching this, how many sales do you have a month? What if just what if every single one of those sales that you're able to get your consumer, your new customer to go online and publish a review explaining how the in-home sales experience was and why they felt comfortable moving forward, how quickly would that boost your rating on Google? I mean, how quickly could you compile reviews and then you get all these testimonials? And it made such a world of difference. It was absolutely transformative the moment we started doing that stuff. Yeah, that's a, that's a great idea. Yeah. You know, something as simple as that, as that can really make a huge difference. Yeah, and think of it this way, Tim, too. The customers are reading reviews with that salesperson's name in the review, right? So it's yeah. building credibility in that sales professional as well. So there's a lot of benefits to it, but I just want to talk about that. Absolutely. All right, let's shift gears here. Now let's talk about this concept of, okay, we know what we got to do in our presentation. How does it look nowadays compared to maybe the way it looked in the past? And when you think about it, the elements of selling in the past really are no different than what they are now. They're really the ones we just talked about. Mm -hmm. But the manner in which you deliver them probably is a little bit different nowadays than what it was in the past, because that's what consumers are expecting. So let's go ahead and talk about that. And let's summarize maybe what we chatted about up to this point. Remember we talked about the survey or the, 
the research from JD Power say yep. personalized experience is what buyers of home improvement products are really looking for. And then our mission with our presentation is to get people to know, like, and trust us. And those are two of the elements we really got to strive for in 2023. So how are we going to do that? I think it's through technology. So now let's shift gears. I want to give you all a little glimpse of what we do at Paradigm Bendo. Um, kind of consider what we're going to do here is not necessarily a, a big pitch for our product, although you certainly can look at it that way if you wish. Uh, hopefully some of the things we'll chat about here will, will kind of bring, bring to life some of the things we mentioned in the first part of this webinar and give you some ideas of how you can really accomplish them in the home. So the question is, why do you use technology? Why you should use technology to enhance your sales presentation? You know, there's really a, a number of reasons. Uh, when you look at the list we have here, I won't really spend time on each one of those individually. Kind of begins with the number one reason. Customers are expecting it. Saw a survey done recently that 62% of people surveyed said that really when they're considering doing business with a company, they actually compare how they make presentations with other industries. And let's face it, there's a lot of other industries that are using technology in wonderful ways. And if we're being compared to some of those and we go in with that free ring binder, and jotting out a price on a business card or something like that and all sorts of paper, yeah, it's not cutting it anymore. It's going to make you more professional, separate you from competitors. Personalized experience. Technology really makes it easier for you to personalize the experience. And that's so important, as we learned earlier. How about this? Makes a salesperson's job easier and faster. Now, they say time kills all deals. And if you're spending a ton of time trying to figure out complicated pricing in a home and things such as that, you know, you're, you're really having the clock work against you there. Yeah. And even after you close the sale, I mean, there's nothing worse than I just earned their business after two and a half, three hours. Right. <laughs> and now I have another hour of filling out all this paperwork manually by hand with my terrible handwriting that hopefully by some you know, luck of the draw that the person in production can translate what I even wrote. <laughs> Um, so you're talking about, you know, making the, the whole job easier and faster and more streamlined and efficient. That was the biggest thing that we noticed when we started going more digital is I'm not sitting here trying to translate all the chicken scratch from these salespeople because let's be honest, they don't have the greatest grammar or penmanship. And then, you know, it minimized the things that they would try to sell that we couldn't sell. Because again, if you have a digital platform, they can only sell what's readily available within the platform. However, when they can draw on a napkin or write things out by hand, they pretty much can make up whatever they want. And it causes all kinds of productions and headaches. And just in terms of the paperwork, you know, salespeople going to and from the office trying to grab paperwork or even worse, they get into the house, they realize they don't have the paperwork. <laughs> I've had that happen to me in the past. I didn't have the contract with me or the survey. And I'm like, oh my God, even if I sell this job, what am I gonna do? Um, so there's you know, a thousand different reasons why it enhances the whole uh, experience for both the, the customer and the salesperson, but some of these uh, are, are really undeniable benefits. Uh, eliminating mistakes and quoting. Flexibility. You know, some people are still doing remote visits and maybe that'll continue in the future. Maybe it would be ramped up a little bit. Yeah. Uh, speaking of ramp it up, you're going to reduce ramp up time for salespeople because you've got this process for them to follow. Enables quality control and presentation. Some of the metrics you can get out of these technology tools really can teach you a bunch of stuff to help closing ratios. And then maybe the last thing on this list, it's really a better overall customer experience. Mm -hmm. And remember, we're looking for customer satisfaction here. And even before the job is installed, you know, we want them to love us. Did I ever talk to you about the virtual reality, the 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 home improvement company is using virtual reality? I don't think so. So there's this company out in California that does kitchen remodeling. And I don't know the name of the company, I should probably figure it out, but when they schedule a meeting with the prospect, they actually mail them an Oculus. So they actually mail them a VR headset and they have a whole step-by-step -step and how to turn it on and set it up. And what they do is they do these appointments virtually they do this whole thing remotely and they design the entire kitchen and essentially have the customer using virtual reality 
living in their new kitchen, being able to walk around and see everything, almost like they're actually there for real. And to me, it was just kind of a mind-blowing idea that, you know, obviously it seems kind of foreign to us now, but don't be surprised if technology gets to the point where virtual selling and even virtual reality selling becomes one of the more powerful ways to get out to people and to, uh, to again, that's what, to enhance the customer experience. I don't know how you could get better than that, in my opinion, like having them actually physically live in their new kitchen, be able to see everything, that, how their house is gonna look when they're done, it's, it's pretty crazy. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> All right, let's go back a few decades. <laughs> nice. 1987. So I already mentioned a little bit about my background and past and being in the window business and creating a CRM and all that kind of stuff. But before I did that, actually where I started is this is the exact little handheld computer I had that I went and programmed all of our pricing into. And uh, had this way back in 1987. And I learned something very interesting back then, Dominic. And what I learned is that I found that people accepted and believed my pricing way more when it came off that little tape on the left of this printer than they did if it came out of my mouth. Yeah. And I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. Uh, this is what this looks like today. Mm -hmm. And frankly, that's why I'm with Paradigm Bendel today because I was intrigued with it way back then. And now just up a few generations and up a little bit of technology. And we have a tool that certainly does what that little handheld computer did back then but it does a whole lot more. So a brief run through of really how this can help with us accomplishing what we've discussed thus far. Uh, this is what this looks like on an iPad. And Paradigm Demo can run on an iPad, it can run on Android devices, can run on a laptop, whatever you want. Most people are, are using it on iPads. But what this is, it's in your salespeople's hands and it pretty much controls the whole presentation. And it pretty much follows the steps that we typically go through, which is that inspection step, demo step, configure step, and then a quote step, and then generating contracts and all that kind of stuff. So we'll tiptoe through each one of those very briefly, give you a glimpse of how this works, and uh, see what you think as we go on. So you got a lead, right? And here we got our friend, uh, ex-University of Wisconsin football player, hey, Russell. Russell. And we got a lead with Russell. and. We want to go and salesperson gets their laptop, gets up in the morning, looks and sees their leads that they got, integrates with whatever CRM you're using, whether it be Market Sharp, Improve It 360, Lead Perfection, Salesforce, whatever the case may be. Your leads dump right into Vendo here and ready to go for your salespeople. So they come in and they say, I'm going to go run that lead. So they go into Russell Wilson's home. And what they're going to do is they're going to let them know right away, hey, I got a little tool here that's going to help us get through what we're going to chat about for about a bit of time that we have together here this evening or this afternoon. And what we're going to do, and this is this concept of this is how we work. What we're going to do is first off, we're going to do a little bit of inspection of your home, find out a few things, find out really what your home is looking for, what you're looking for, get some measurements. And then I'm going to show you some of the solutions we got that might make sense to you. Then we're going to get into the configure step and show you how that works out in terms of the options you have and colors and things such as that. And then we're going to go ahead and get you some pricing and see if this makes sense for you to proceed. So that's the this is how we work concept. And then we're going to dive into that inspection step. And here what we got going on is uh, you can go ahead and get measurements in here of whatever you're selling, whether it be windows, siding, roofing, bathrooms, whatever the case may be. You go ahead and get them in there. You can take pictures of stuff on the fly. You can annotate them and get them in there and, and really start building your list of things that you're going to use later on in a presentation. So something very important happens here. And this is kind of cool what we got built in here. It uses augmented reality. But here you are on an iPad, right? It's time to measure a window. So what you can do is you come into the iPad that you have here. And then you. I'm just going to demo how this works. You take your iPad and you kind of point at uh, the lower left corner of your window here. And you're going to go ahead and drag it up to the top right corner of your window. You see what's going on, don't you? And uh, bang, you're going to snap this picture. Once you get that done, you just go ahead and tap it. And look, you got your measurements for that window. And let's go ahead and do one more window. 
And uh, imagine what this feels like to a consumer. You know, you're not out there with an old tape and stuff like that. You're really separating yourself from the competition and showing them you guys are a first class operation that's using technology in really cool ways, again, because that's what they're expecting. So you go ahead and get the windows measured doing this kind of stuff. And what's going to happen is you're going to see the window measurements are going to appear here shortly. And there they are. And bang, they're going to be right in your program, just like that. So yeah, you can use augmented like reality in like... an iPad to do that. Or you can use what's called a Bosch measuring device, which is an infrared measuring device to get your measurements in there as well. Yeah, so one, one of the elements of building trust is they want to know that you're an expert in your chosen profession. And pulling out an iPad with that type of augmented reality technology and seeing how that captures the measurements and just how polished and professional that looks, those are those little things that are going to continue to build on their level of confidence, their level of trust, your professionalism. And again, all these things are ways that you're differentiating. Because one of the big things that I preach and harp on is price only becomes a, determin a determining factor when you fail to differentiate. And you said it obviously many times already. And this is something Rick Gross used to hammer into my mind uh, early in my sales career is people will spend more money on the same product if it's with someone they know, they like, and they trust. And differentiation is not necessarily just pertaining to your product or even your service. It's everything you do when you're in the house. And of course, having uh, an inspection process, being able to get the homeowner involved, get them invested in the process. I would even have them like holding onto the iPad and as I'm like doing, you know, opening and closing the windows and have them uh, try sitting back and taking a picture of it, get them involved, get them invested. And uh, one thing that I have been sharing with people, and this is uh, when I started virtually selling, I especially realized this, the more invested I can get the homeowner into the entire process, especially the inspection, the more likely they are to invest in you and your solution. So don't be afraid to get them involved. It makes the whole thing a lot more exciting. Uh, it's just all those things you can do with this technology to set you apart. When I first saw that augmented reality, I, I was pretty blown away by it. Just, thinking back at all my sales encounters, how much time that would have saved and how much more professional that would have looked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty neat stuff. All right, so we're still in the inspection step here. Stop so here. what's going on here is we, we went and did the measurements, we got them all in there, we did the inspection, we took some pictures, made some, you know, maybe notes on the pictures and so forth. Uh, and then we can go ahead and create what's called an inspection report here. And this is pretty cool. Can have a cover picture, of course, that has a picture of their home if you want on it. And then it pretty much summarizes what you discovered in that discovery step that you just went through. It's got the pictures in there. It's got conditions that you found with solutions that are outlined with pre-formatted paragraphs. And it's pretty neat that that, that, that uh, inspection report gets created for you and tells your story for you. And that's something you can... You can email them if you wish or just show them on screen at that point. Yeah, and it has your company brand guidelines and logos and their house. So obviously it's reinforcing your company as a, a top professional company, but it's also that personalized experience that they're looking for. So I think that's beautiful. All right, on to the demo step. So we did the inspection. Now it's time to kind of fill their bucket. We emptied their bucket in the inspection step. Going to fill their bucket now and offer the solutions and the products that we have that make the most sense for them. And here you got a vast resource of whatever resources you want, just built in the application to tell your story for you. Uh, I think many people on this call probably use our friends at Engage. I'm a huge fan of what Engage does. Mm -hmm. And you can have Engage totally built into Vendo here. That at this point, you just go out to your Engage presentation and tell your story there. You can have direct access to Google reviews from here, you know, to PDFs or product brochures, or maybe the cost versus value study or warranty information. Anything you need at your fingertips is available here that you can use in the demo step to tell your story. So pretty neat that all these things are, are really available. So what I have here is uh, this is just some of the stuff that we got from Engage. So you have an Engage presentation. It's here telling the story for you. At this part of the presentation, maybe you're showing your samples and things such as that. So really important part of the presentation. But as we mentioned earlier, it's more than just demoing your product. It's the visuals, 
and all that kind of stuff that go right along with it that really tell your story and maybe some testimonials here that are also telling the story. So that's where the demo step lies. You have all your resources there to go ahead and really add a dimension to your demo that goes beyond just showing them a corner cut of a window or something other than that. Yeah, and if they had testimonial videos and stuff, that's something that they could upload into that as well as a separate kind of tab on there? Absolutely, yeah. yeah excellent. Any, any type of file that you can get on an iPad or a computer can be accessed there directly and seamlessly. So you're not going out to various things. It's all very, very seamless in the application. Okay. All, all right, great. so now it's time to configure. And this is where we think what we've done at Paradigm Bendo, uh, it's really our secret sauce, so to speak, to make sure that we can go ahead and configure these products in what we call a guided shopping tour that a homeowner can go along with us. And then we can get the very accurate to the penny pricing out of it without pulling our hair out. So the way this works is there you got your measurements and so forth. And again, it could be windows, doors, patio doors, siding, roofing, whatever the case may be. Uh, you got your measurements in there and now you're gonna take them through this guided shopping tour. So you really can't tell here on these slides, but this thing scrolls to the bottom here and here's where you can go ahead and configure anything you want about this particular window. Colors, grids, things such as that. You can show them an interior, exterior view. So as you're building this product with the homeowner here, you're gonna notice that drawing on the right changes right along with you. So you get this dimensional drawing of the products you're recommending as you're building it up. And it really makes the presentation enjoyable for a homeowner and gets them involved. So that's really, really important. Now, as you can see here, here we got some of the siding stuff that's going on, picking out colors, same with roofing, things such as that. Uh, if you're in the bath business, we got that configurator going on too. So pretty neat how that's working out. Yeah, I think you you solve a big problem that I've noticed in this industry. And I think one of the problems that's also prevented contractors from making this transition is Paradigm, and kind of going back to the beginning of our conversation, they've been in the, the building and trades industry for over 20 years. And you had mentioned that about 70%, for example, of all window manufacturers were already using Paradigm for their pricing and their proposal generating software for literally decades. So if you went to a big box store and you're getting a quote on like a new Anderson or Pella windows, the software they would use to quote that project out for you was Paradigm. So as a result of that, you have the, the means, and this is kind of your strategy moving forward, is getting to that manufacturer level and working out arrangements where essentially in advance, Paradigm has all the data and information on all their windows, the specifications, and you know, obviously able to go into the visualizer and all that, the configurators. All that stuff's built in, so if I'm a contractor selling windows, I basically just select my manufacturer that I'm using, and all the heavy lifting that a lot of contractors are scared to death to do is really non-existent at that point. Obviously, there are things that need to be customized, but I think one of the things that scares contractors is the fact that they themselves have to manually enter things and build these things out, and there's just no way in the million years they don't they have the time or the bandwidth or the desire to do that. Because <laughs> uh, I've seen people in some cases take like six months and sometimes two years to get these things built out correctly just because it wasn't turnkey. Um, so with Paradigm, it seems like more plug and play. You're right, it, it's quite an undertaking to do that. So uh, with Paradigm Bendo being in the business that they've been in and having these relationships with all these manufacturers and, and uh, having these configurators already built, and it's a complete product catalog. It's just not some line item price list per se. This thing flexes with whatever you're doing in that guided shopping experience to continue to price that product right down to the penny. And uh, that is very cool. And again, it gives confidence to the homeowner as they see this unfolding right in front of their eyes. Yeah. So once we get them configured, Dominic, it's time to get them a quote. And uh, what happens there is you now can see, okay, here's one of the windows that we're proposing here. And you really can not probably see, but in addition to the pricing that's going on, it has all the very uh, specific details about the product in here as well. So it's very, very professional. And uh, then you can have promotions that you can access right here uh, in the quote step. 
Uh, so you might have two or three different offers and promotions you can make available to a homeowner here. And I'm going to share more about how this works uh, once we get to a slide in a couple of minutes. But that's very important. And here's you can also enter into the financing phase of it. I mentioned one thing you should do is you should make sure to offer a financing option in every presentation you make. And this makes it so easy. It has totally built in, fully integrated financing in it. It's just not something you can reach out to one of your finance companies and then have it do its thing and not have it be totally synced with your sales solution. It's fully integrated in here and it's really smooth how it works. So it's time to quote now. Okay, you can have good, better, best situations in here if you want. Remember, you just you just did the inspection step. You got all the measurements. You go into the configure step and maybe you select, mm, we're gonna do a good, better, best situation with the three lines of windows we have. And here it can present it all uh, very, very quickly and easily without you know pulling your hair out and doing three separate estimates. So if you do the better, good, better, best scenario, this is so easy to make that work for you. If you don't do this, it's no big deal, but it's it's totally capable to do this for you. Very, very yeah, good. plus how powerful is that where it's like the best is only you know $15 a month more, right? Especially with the financing built in, it makes it seem like nothing. I just wanted to talk about that real briefly. That was one of the big epiphanies I had in my sales career you know, going from everything on paper to going digital is presenting financial terms on an iPad. And kind of like you mentioned earlier, there's something about that little white piece of paper and that computer printing that stuff on there that made everything seem far more legitimate and more powerful. When I would work this financial terms out on the iPad and slide it over and it would have the different monthly investments, there's something psychological about that, the legitimacy, the legitimacy of it and how official that appears and how professional that is. You get a lot more people that just wholeheartedly buy into it. And assuming the sale is so easy at that point, <laughs> like literally with a lot of these different finance companies, once you present financial terms, they can simply click one button. A lot of times it says, I apply. And then within two minutes, you got a, a completely filled out credit application and the financing's done. So the simplicity and the speed and efficiency of that entire process has dramatically been enhanced by this digital platform and the technology, so. You're right, it doesn't end up being two separate, mm, two separate transactions, so to speak. It's all built into one and it feels much better to a homeowner. So yeah, here's a screen that just shows you can have the various types of programs that whatever finance company you're using has available to you. So, so important. And this is going to increase your clothing ratio. If you're not offering financing on every presentation you make, this is going to increase your closing ratio and get you higher ticket sales without question. All right, time to do a contract, right? So what we do at Paradigm Bendo is we pretty much take your contract, whatever it might be, we just kind of overlay things like merge fields in it um, and we make it do its thing. So the contract is being filled out just based on the configure step that took place a little bit ago. And then of course it has digital signatures built in here. We have our own built-in digital signature platform. So you don't have to have DocuSign and pay extra for that or anything like that. So it's pretty neat how all this works. So it's totally paperless. Uh, it's kind of what people are expecting nowadays. And of course here's, the final contract as it's being built. As you can see here, here's those windows with both an interior and exterior view of colors, all the specific specifications of the windows. If you want this level of detail, can also be provided here. And of course, there's the investment. So that's the contract. So pretty neat how all this works. Yeah, and what a super powerful way to button up the sale, right? Because part of the reason that people cancel, obviously they have buyer's remorse, but there's something about waking up the next day where they just don't have clarity on certain aspects of the project and having everything organized and printed out and explained in such a really clear way with the pictures and all the illustrations and it's got their house on it. It's this really beautiful leave behind packet that a salesperson could leave with them or like you said, email to them. I just think that's a really powerful way to tie up any loose ends and button up that sale. You know, and you mentioned the word clarity. You know, I, I remember back to the very early days of my sales career with listening to Zig Ziglar. 
And remember one thing he said that has stuck with me all these years. He said this, a confused mind automatically says what, Dominic? No. No, exactly. <laughs> yeah. you know? So we got to make sure everything we do is as clear as possible and give that homeowner that level of confidence. Absolutely. So let's wrap up. Okay, we're almost there. Uh, we got the contract generated. We got the signature and all that. You know, it's time to get a deposit. So there's payment processing built in here if you want to use that. Again, it's seamless, so you don't have two separate things going on. Uh, you can further explore financing options if you wish. And again, the integration with your CRM, you know, that starts happening right here in terms of sending results back to your CRM, sending back PDFs of the proposal or contract or whatever the case may be. So pretty neat uh, when the sale is made. Um, It'll automatically email that homeowner, of course, the contract if you wish, plus an email congratulating them on the sale and things such as that. So a couple of things are new, Dominic, and then we'll wind down. Here's something that, that is pretty neat. Um, and this may or may not uh, work with everybody's strategy in the home, but I mentioned discounting earlier in terms of how you handle that. Mm -hmm. And what you can have going on in Bendos, you can have your promos listed in here. You can have this unlimited number of whatever ones your salespeople can, can choose from to make available to a homeowner. So what happens is they select maybe the mm, sales cost savings plan discount, whatever that may be, uh, or a senior citizen discount. So they start layering a couple of discounts on here. And what you can have in the admin area of the, of the program is you can have a situation where there can be a maximum discount that can be allowed before something happens. Yeah. And if all of a sudden you re reach that threshold and all of a sudden, okay, that's a little much. Uh, what happens here is you need to request approval for this before you can proceed. So if a salesperson is getting this message, the two discounts are listed here. They go ahead and they click uh, apply the, for this um, approval from a sales manager, immediately what's happened, sales manager gets a text and an email saying, hey, we need an answer on this right now. So there's a link there, and that link goes and shows them the exact proposal, what's being suggested and so forth and so on, uh, what's being offered for a discount, and the sales manager can either, either decline or approve this. And in real time, the salesperson in the home gets a message back saying, hey, you're good to go, proceed. Or, nope, sorry, can't do that. And then they got to go ahead and... So now let me ask you, so when they send that for approval, the sales manager, they'll have the, basically the scope of the work, they'll have the address, the names of the clients, really kind of the entire 30,000 foot view of what the salesperson's doing, right? Yes. So yeah. the reason why this is, this is kind of a light bulb for me, so one thing a lot of our sales people are trained to do is what we call a higher authority close where basically they call a manager or owner to try to see if the customer marketing program or the neighborhood reference program or whatever it is is available to tee up another discount. And it's kind of similar to that where you could have that built in on that higher authority to where that also has to go through this approval process. And then the manager can simply get their text, you know, request for higher authority or for the customer marketing program and they look it up, they look at the scope of the work, the neighborhood, and then they can approve it or not approve it. And then that could be written evidence that they could present to their prospects. This, this neighborhood reference program was approved. Um, I think that would be an incredible use of that tool along with what you're already doing. Uh, that would streamline that whole process because that's very time consuming for sales leaders or for people in call centers even taking those phone calls all day long. <laughs> so if you could automate that and do it via text message, that'd be huge. Yeah. Yeah. We're excited about this. Yeah. Um, that's one great. more thing that's new is we all have our own paradigm finance program. And um, we're excited about this because the level of integration into the app is is much more sophisticated than just hooking up with with an outside finance program. Uh, the rates are more than competitive with all the other leaders out there in the industry. Um, you can build in whatever finance you want into paradigm Bendo. Uh, but just be aware that Paradigm Finance is built in. Uh, it probably has some advantages of reaching out to other finance programs, whether it be rates or just simplicity of use, whatever the case may be. But we're excited about that and got that built in uh, to Vendo as well. Wow. That, yeah, that's definitely a new thing. Congrats on that. 
Yeah, that's a big deal. All right, we're going to wind down here, Dominic. How to use technology to enhance your sales presentation and not replace it? Here's what I suggest. You know, outline your presentation. That's what you got Dominic for. Have him help you with your masterful presentation, making sure you're doing that step selling and you're doing it in a manner that's touching all the bases we mentioned. And then, of course, what Dominic teaches goes well beyond that. Then determine what technology tools can add useful dimension to these steps. You know, certainly we think Paradigm Bendo can help. Uh, Engage is a great program. There's another program called Real Voice that's technology oriented that really helps with the presentation. So check out some of these things, figure out what tools can really add useful dimension. Don't just, don't just clog it up with technology for technology's sake. Make sure it's doing its job. And then go ahead and craft your presentation. And then alert the homeowner you're going to use some of these technology helpers in your presentation, presentation. and how and why that will benefit them. And then finally, you know, train, train, train your salespeople and have them practice, 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 and make this ultra silky smooth. And if you do that, this is going to work in a fabulous way. So to sum up, think about this. We talked about customer satisfaction when we started, right? That's our ultimate goal. And when you think about it, the sales experience often sets the tone for the long-term customer satisfaction of the client. This is after the product's installed and so forth. I think you'd have to agree that these impressions we make on them in the sales experience are probably going to live with us throughout this experience with the homeowner. So it's critical we get this right and give them that experience that's just first class. Because think about this also. You know, a satisfied customer, when you think about it, is really the best business strategy of all because there's so many ways you can leverage that. So suggestion or two as we wind down, obviously here's one, embrace technology as it comes your way. If you don't, we mentioned earlier, you're probably gonna get run over in our industry. So embrace the technology tools, check them out, make sure you're selecting ones that make sense for your business and your needs, but embrace it, don't run from it. And you know, Dominic, for years and years and years, as I've done presentations throughout the country, I've ended with what I'm about to share here. And I do so for a, for a good reason. And what this is, this is something, this is something a, a guy told me decades ago when I was in a different business. And I was doing okay, but I went to a conference where the best of the best were there. The most successful people in the country were there. And I went there to learn. You know, and I wanted these secrets, so to speak, of what these people had. And I remember I took one guy aside. His name was Jim. I said, Jim, tell me, what can I do to make my business look like yours when I come back here next year? And he said, all right, Tim, I'm going to tell you. And I got all excited. He says, I'm going to clue you in on what I have come to call reality thinking. And I went, okay. Not sure what was coming, but I went, okay. He said, Tim, think about how you got your business to where it is today and ask yourself this question. So, Tim, if you do what you've always done, and I think everybody on this webinar know what's coming next, Dominic. And yes, this is what he said next. He said, you're going to get what you always got. And frankly, at that point, I wanted to slug him because I didn't want that kind of advice. Yeah. That seemed too vague to me. I wanted a magic direct mail piece that's going to get me a ton of leads. <laughs> Not what he gave me. He told me this, and guess what? It's decades later, and I'm still talking about this bit of advice, some of the some best of the advice best. I've ever heard. But nowadays, I don't even think this is true anymore. I think if companies in our industry continue what you've always done, you're going to start getting a lot less than you have been getting for a variety of reasons. So embrace that technology. Bring your bring your business and company and salespeople up as many notches as you can and continue to strive to be the best you can be. So with that, Dominic, I just got some contact information here. There's a QR code people can scan if they'd like to learn more. Um, and we'd love to give you a demo of Vendo if you'd like to learn more about how it can enhance your business. Yeah, and make sure you take advantage of this. Of course, you can do a demo through here. Um, I also want to mention that Gross University has our Agogi Summit, 
March 28th through the 30th. And this is gonna be at the gorgeous Omni Resort at Hilton Head Island, South Carolina. We're gonna have Paradigm there. They're gonna be doing obviously a lot of in-person stuff. We're gonna have a golf outing on day three. But I will say, just a webinar exclusive, anybody that scans this QR code and sets up a discovery call with Tim, he's got some complimentary Agogi tickets. This is a $1,500 value. He'll go ahead and comp your ticket to the Agogi Summit. And during this Agogi Summit, in case you've never been to a Grasso Owners Camp event, we're gonna be teaching you pretty much everything you need to run a profitable business, set yourself up for legacy wealth, production operations training, obviously how to generate more leads, it's always a hot topic. I'm gonna to be taking a deep dive into growing your sales foundation, including sales leadership, the foundational pillars you need to scale a sales army. Pretty much, you know, mindset, motivation, everything you need is gonna be at this Grass University at Gogi Summit and uh, courtesy of Paradigm and this, obviously this amazing Vendo software. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and comp your tickets. So make sure you take advantage of that offer. Of course, we'd love to see you there. And as always, Tim, you know, we appreciate the amazing presentation. Of course, we appreciate the partnership with Gross University. So we're really excited about the future of Vendo Paradigm. I don't know if people realize that this is a company that has about 500 employees. And as you can see, they're not afraid to innovate. So what you see now, of course, is highly impressive. This is only going to continue to get more and more advanced and more and more user-friendly as time goes on. So the big message is, is if you've held on, off on doing this before, it's understandable. But now this type of software has gotten perfected to the point where you can plug and play. It's very turnkey. It's going to transform your business overnight, make it, make it way more efficient. And not only are you going to have a much higher level of closing and average sale and conversion, but also your profitability and your efficiency and your back end efficiency is going to be greatly enhanced as a result of making this investment. And this I'm speaking firsthand, you know, going through this evolution myself. So any uh, last words there, Tim, um, that you want to share with the, the viewers? Well, no, Dominic, I just uh, appreciate the, the opportunity to spend some time with you and get your perspective on some things. You always great, bring great commentary and a lot of great stories and a lot of sense to sales presentations. So we're, we're excited about the upcoming event coming up in March. Can't wait to get there. So we'll look forward to seeing you there, Dominic. Absolutely. I got to try to censor myself because I got to try to keep these webinars under two hours. So, uh, so we appreciate it. And as I mentioned at the beginning of this webinar, make sure you stick around. Uh, we're going to open it up for about 10 minutes of Q&A. If there's any questions you want to ask live with myself and Tim, we'll go ahead and get those answered right then and there. But again, we appreciate everyone taking the time to invest in their future. Hopefully you found the content really beneficial. And as always at Grassi University, yes, you are a closer. <laughs>